Okay, so we have our ability. We're still customizing how this is going to get drawn in the editor. So we have our name, right? And then we actually want to add our damage and we want to add our type. So in this video, we're going to primarily look at how we can do some little math and, you know, pixel calculations to draw multiple things on one line and then to see how we can draw on a separate line underneath. So once we do those two things, you know, you can keep experimenting with that to customize how you want to use your draw space. So we have our draw name property done. We need to draw the damage property on the same line. We'll just do it half and half probably. And then we need our element, like our type on the second line. And we'll put that somewhere else. Like maybe we'll center it or something. So let's, let's do that. We're gonna do it the same way. We just need to do some extra calculations here. Uh, I'm gonna condense this stuff now that you see it. Like uh, we have our X pause, our Y pause, our width and our height. We're calculating it out, but I'm gonna condense that into the rect itself. Again, we'll call this draw area because it's local. It's not going to interfere with our other draw area. New rect. So we're gonna make another rectangle. We're gonna define the bounds of what we're gonna draw. Okay, so this one's a little different, right? So this is position. So where do we wanna start this? Now, because we need to start this halfway across the inspector window, we need to do a little bit of calculation here. Uh, specifically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate how wide this inspector window is, and I'm going to take that divide it in half and add that to the position. So if I know the half point of how wide this is, take that and use that as my start point, then I can start drawing halfway across the screen. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say uh, position.min.x plus, and then I'm, I need the uh, width of the screen, right? Because we can resize it horizontally, position.width times 0.5f. Um, so if we multiply it by 0.5, we're going to get half of the width. So if we get half of the width, this is going to be our X position to start drawing, right? Right here. Now, technically, we need to give it a vertical position too, right? But this is the X point is halfway across the uh, window. Alrighty, uh, just for clarity, I'm going to add a little comma there and give it our second parameter, which is our Y. So we want to start drawing on the second line. So just like we did above here, our Y plus, you know, add our single line height because we need to start drawing on the second line here. This is gonna still be our first line. Position dot min dot Y. So start drawing from the top, but then add editor GUI utility dot single line height. Okay, so we're gonna draw, we're gonna uh, start from the top, add a single line and then start drawing on, you know, at the start of that second line vertically. Add this, this distance, this is a single line height, and then start drawing here. This should start drawing our rectangle right around this space right here. And then we just need our width and our height. Our width, position.size.x. Now remember, we're not starting here and drawing the full width of our window. We're, we're starting here and we're drawing half of the width of the window, right? We only want to take up this much space. So again, we actually need to multiply by 0.5f. This is just where weird math comes in. You just have to like look at it as you're calculating and um, determine how to, how to draw that. And then our height is going to be just like above. Close parentheses and then a semicolon. Okay, so just to reiterate, we're going to calculate the X start point by taking the current width of the window halfway across, so 0.5 and start drawing here. Same with vertical, we're gonna add a line and start, we know this is where we wanna start our property. So we've gotten to this point, then our width is gonna be half of our win window's length because again, we multiplied the total size by 0.5 and then our uh, height is gonna be one line height. Now we just calculated it, right? We didn't really start drawing it, so let's start drawing it. Right underneath there, just like we did before. Editor GUI dot property field draw area. Uh, which property we want damage because we're in the draw damage method right here. And give it a label. What do we want to call this label? Um, damage. Right. If we didn't give it a label, we it would just be an empty field and the designer has no idea what's supposed to go in there. So we're just giving it a label. All right, we can save it. And we're gonna see something that is actually a little wrong. And let me double check here. Okay, right, so what's happening here is we're actually drawing our full name property, and then we're trying to draw our damage property, but it's drawing it on top of each other, right? Right now, think about why that is. Look back at our code. 
Uh, the reason that it's doing that is because we have defined the width of our name as the full line, right? We, we're using the whole full line for our name. And so it's getting confused because we're saying we want the full line for our name and it draws that. And then it's, then we're saying, we but we want to draw this on top and then it draws that. Well, it's confused because we're telling it to do both and we can't draw two things on top of each other. It would appear odd. So our draw name, we actually do want to be half of the space. So we're going to take our draw name, we're going to come back here and we're going to say width, just like we did before, times 0.5f, right? Half of the editor window. Save that here, minimize. Okay, so now we see something else here. We're seeing that uh, our name is there, our damage is there, but it, it's kind of a little funky, right? Like it's bumped up right up against damage. So maybe one thing we could do is we could add a little padding here. So maybe instead of being half of the window, we only want it to be 0.4 instead of 0.5, like go most of the way, but not exactly half. Uh, so we could kind of eyeball it a little bit. So change that to 0.4, save it. Okay, so we're adding a little space here, but now our other problem is that our label is taking up so much space that we don't even have room to type in our, our thing over here. So another thing that we can do is we can actually control the size of the label if we want. Uh, we can do that by coming up here. We could say editor GUI utility dot label width is equal to, at this point, you just kind of have to eyeball it. We're going to say 60, <clears throat> see what happens. So I'm going to save that, come back in here. Right, and you can see it's changing the width of our label. So if we wanted to set that back, we would need to change that later if we want. For now, it's not really a problem, so we're not gonna worry about it. Uh, but you can see like, it, it's not perfect, but it's it's pretty close, right? Like if we need a little bit more space, we can, we can continue to calculate or, or whatever. Uh, maybe our damage doesn't need as much space. So instead of drawing halfway across, we could draw 0.75 across. At this point, you can kind of like change it according to the need that, that you have, but this is how you could start to do that, right? It's just all it's putting in extra numbers to get it to look exactly how you want. So let's say we're fine with it for now, and we wanna look at how to draw on a second line. So we'll do that next. Let's say what we have here. So we have fireball damage. We could put in, I don't know, how much damage a fireball should do, 10 maybe. I don't know how much a mystic orb should do, maybe five. I don't even know what that is. Lightning, I don't know, eight. Okay, so now we need to assign the element type for all these. Save it, come back into our script. Okay, our draw element, which remember our element type is our monster ability over here. We wanna assign it uh, an element type that we have. <clears throat> Same thing as before, we're gonna draw a rectangle, or sorry, we're gonna calculate a rectangle and then we're going to draw it and give it the element property. Rect draw area is equal to new rect Okay, now again, we have to figure out what is our position or what is our X position, what is our Y position, what is our width and our height. Those are the main things we need to calculate. So let, let's say that we want to indent it some, like maybe we want to draw it somewhere around here. I don't think it will look great, but I want to show you, you can start drawing wherever you want. Like you could start at the end. You just need to calculate it properly. Let's say if I just wanted to draw somewhere underneath, like just to make a little, like we'll put it right right here or right there or whatever, because we can, it's not, not gonna look great for now. Uh, new rect, we need to get the X position. So we're gonna do the same math that we did before. We're gonna say start at the leftmost point and then add on to that total width and multiply that by some fraction of it. So 0.3 or something. Yeah, and then we'll put in our second parameter. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna take the total width and if we multiply that by 0.3, it'd get a third of that and then start right here, right? If, if this is what we want to do. All right, we're going to do something similar for our um, height, like our Y position. So at this point, we have to figure out what line we want to draw on, right? So if we're drawing on line three, then we need to calculate the space. So this is going to be the vertical height of one line times the number of lines that we want to skip. So if we're on line three, we want to take the vertical height of two lines and add that at the current position. Okay, so that's gonna look like this. We'll say position.min.y plus editor GUI utility dot single line height times two. So single line height times two. Now, if I put times three, that would actually 
skip a space and add it on a third line, right? But only if we also came back up here, right? Like if we wanted more space to draw, we would need to remember to come back up here to our get property height. Like we right now, we only have three total lines to work with, right? But if we wanted, uh, let's change this to three, right? So if we wanna have four total lines to work with, then I'm, I'm gonna put that there so you can see that we can add some spacing if we want. Uh, we're not gonna see that yet because we still have an error here. So we're gonna start on our vertical Y. We're gonna say, start at the top and then take the single line height, single line height, single line height, two times and start here. Line, line, start here, vertical, comma. So then our third parameter is our width. You know, how wide do we want this to be? Uh, we could make this a whole line if we wanted, but we don't really need that. Let's just do something in between. We'll say 0.4, say position size dot x times some fractional value of the total width. Like, I don't know, 0.4 sounds good to me. You could always change this later. And then the height of what we want is, again, editor GUI utility, and line height. I'm drawing line by line. I think that's easy to wrap my head around, but you could you know, draw some things uh, across multiple lines if you want. And so now that we've calculated the draw rectangle, we actually need to draw it, right? We've just calculated it. Let's draw it. Editor, GUI, just like above here, dot property field. Draw area. The property we want is our element and give it a label. Element type. Yeah, we could put whatever we want for this label, right? We could call it element, we could call it element type. We have control over that. We will probably want to change the label size, but let's let's just take a look at that first. I'm gonna save it. Okay, uh, you can see it recompiled. Because we overrode our uh, get property height up here and we added four lines, but we're only drawing on the top three, we have the space down here. So if you didn't want that, you could come back here and you could change this back. So let's, I just wanted to show you how you could continue to expand. Uh, but we'll change that back to two, save it, come back. Okay, so it's a little more condensed, but I don't know, maybe that's fine. Maybe you don't like that, whatever. You can change it. You can see that we're running out of space on our label uh, because it's still running off of our previous label size. We can come back up here. We could go to draw element property. We're going to say editor, oh, we'll just copy this up here. Editor GUI utility dot label width is equal to uh, let's give that more space. I don't know, 100. I don't even know what the default is. Okay, so you can see that now we have more room for our label, but now our property is, you know, is not wide enough that we can see it. So why don't we just take this and then use the rest of the space for our property? Now, in order to do that, we need to get the total width, right? So we are um, starting at the 0.3. Uh, if we make the width, the rest, so that would be 0.7, then that'll total one. So start at the third and then use the rest of the space as the width, save that. Okay, cool. So we can kind of organize this however, however it makes sense to, right? Like at this point, as long as you can just figure out where you want to put your uh, things, like you could have an image down below this too or whatever, you know, you can start to draw however. So I just want to give you a couple different options to see how you could start to calculate this stuff. Uh, maybe you decide you want more room for your name. Maybe you decide you want your name to be its own line. Uh, maybe you decide you want some extra spacing down here, which maybe I, I turn this back. Right, three, save it. You know, maybe I want that spacing down here just to break things up. Uh, it's up to you, right? You have total control over how you can draw this stuff. You just have to you know, do a little extra calculation for a property drawer. But, you know, I think it's also good practice to learn how to do this stuff. So, you know, you can start to draw your own menus and whatnot. Hope that you learned a little bit with these property drawers and there you can keep going deeper. This is just meant to be a very surface level. Just this is basically how it works. And then if you want to know more, you can dive into the API and, you know, keep learning if this is something that's interesting to you. Uh, so now that we've gone through this stuff, right, our property drawers and our um, custom inspector, we can start to look at custom windows, which is the next step in all this. So we'll we'll do that in uh, future videos.